was nothing but crickets for the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season, but now we're watching this area development around that coast off of Africa. So that's going to develop later on tomorrow as a possibility as an African wave, easterly moving wave, moves out there. It's an easterly wave moving westward. Things are still quiet right now, but we're keeping a close eye on those odds of development. Joining us to discuss the state of the Atlantic is John Euling, research scientist at the North Carolina Institute for Climate Studies. John, thanks, sir. I appreciate you being on the show today. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, a couple of questions out there. It was crickets. This is mm -hmm. the second year in a row where we didn't have a name storm on September 10th. But this 30 percent chance we have right now, and we're still looking at that energy. It's on land. What do you think when it drops uh, right into the water? Well, currently the odds for development are relatively low, only about 30 percent for the seven-day outlook from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, some of the models have been a little bit more aggressive with development than others. The GFS has been a lot more aggressive than, say, the ECMWF when it comes to the development the development chances for this one. Uh, so it's certainly going to be a wait and see. Uh, the middle of the Atlantic has really been hostile towards a lot of the waves that have been coming off of Africa lately. So, uh, But conditions do look a little bit more favorable than they have been for the past couple of weeks for the potential for the development here. So uh, something that we'll definitely have to keep an eye on. And John, what did you say? I feel like the GFS is always a little more robust. <laughs> A little, a little more aggressive. these systems a little more aggressive. Yes. <laughs> but speak more to why you think we're seeing the main development region open up a bit with those conditions, because we have a lot of dry, dusty air, but also to the wind shear factor. Yeah, so I know we're going into the peak of hurricane season, as you mentioned. And again, so the question is, where are all the hurricanes? Mm -hmm. And again, you really need three ingredients for a hurricane to form. You need warm water, low wind shear, and moisture. And we got plenty of warm water. So the question is about the other two factors, wind shear and moisture. And right now, we uh, really don't have a lot of moisture in the atmosphere in the Atlantic. And we also have a lot of wind shear. And this is likely due to the Madden-Julian oscillation or mm -hmm. JO, and this is a uh, global weather pattern that sort of moves around the globe every 30 to 60 days, and it has regions of enhanced thunderstorm activity and suppressed thunderstorm activity. And right now it's positioned so that the suppressed thunderstorm activity or dry air is all over the Atlantic. And so it's really been putting a clamp on what we can see tropical development wise in the Atlantic. Yeah, I was going to ask you this too, John. Do you think the instability is a factor also? Mm -hmm. is, is the upper troposphere just a little bit too warm to get big thunderstorms to blossom? Oh, absolutely. We have a lot of stable air in the Atlantic right now, and it's really preventing those thunderstorms from really growing and developing. And so any of those waves that have been coming off of Africa have really been squashed by the dry and stable air. Yeah. You know, now we're getting into the time of the season where we start to look a little closer to home and more in, in particular, the Central American gyre starts to kick up. So, you know, I think back to last season when we had this kind of quieter peak, uh, the lull, and then, of course, Helene coming out of the gyre and then making that impact at the end of September. Signs that maybe we see that pattern start to set up again. What's your thoughts there as we head towards the back half of the season? Yeah, so just because you have an inactive peak does not mean that you're going to have an inactive rest of the season. And in fact, the NGAO is looking to move into a more favorable phase for tropical development in the Atlantic at the end of this month and moving into October, a lot like what we saw last year. So it's definitely something that we're going to have to be vigilant about. And we don't want to let our guards down yet just because we haven't seen much activity yet this year does not mean we're going to uh, not have activity towards the end of the season. Mm -hmm. Great. John, listen, I really appreciate you coming on the show, my friend. Uh, I would love to have you back on yeah, again yeah. and discuss maybe a little bit later on. we got things popping that we can really <laughs> sink our teeth into. But, John Euling, thank you so much for taking the Absolutely. time to talking to Fox. Good stuff. Thank you. Thanks, buddy.